Uh, we're here today, February 19, 2013, in the home of Angela and Tom Rooney in the Brookland neighborhood of Northeast Washington, D.C. We're going to interview Angela Rooney, who was one of the preeminent figures in the fight in the 1960s, 1970s, to defeat plans to build a network of destructive freeways in the District of Columbia. Freeway projects now long dead that then had such names as the North Central Freeway, the Northeast Freeway, and the Three Sisters Bridge, among others. And uh, before starting, before asking any questions, I just wanted to uh, quote a little bit from an article that the Washington Post ran about 13 years ago, sort of summarizing the freeway fight, which they said, there was a time when the Washington area was supposed to have 450 miles of interstate highways. About 38 of those miles were supposed to pass through the District of Columbia. But because of an epic political battle that lasted 22 years, only 10 were ever built, and all were finished before protests against them started in earnest. Instead, the uh, Washington uh, area got uh, metro. Uh, and the question they asked in this article is, could an unlikely coalition of blacks and whites block freeways that they didn't want in a town without any representation in Congress or heavyweight political experience? And I would add, against the wishes of a powerful southern congressman who held the city in his, his grip. Yeah, uh, sure, and Hill. Today, uh, Washington has fewer miles of freeways within its borders than any other major city on the East Coast. More than 200,000 housing units were saved from destruction. So were more than 100 square miles of parkland around the metropolitan area. The city was spared from freeways bored under the mall, freeways punched through stable middle-class black neighborhoods, freeways tunneled under K Street, freeways that would have obliterated the Georgetown waterfront and the Maryland Bank of the Potomac. Uh, Angela Rooney knows all about this and more, and we have her and so many others to, from that earlier time to thank for a city that today is free of freeways. So, uh, Angela, could you tell us a little about yourself, where you uh, uh, grew up, how you came to Washington, how you came to Brookland, how you got involved in this anti-freeway uh, battle? Well, it's very difficult because I'm 93. Let's face it. And uh, sometimes I think I'm the last living, except for my husband, freeway fighter, because I've had to say goodbye to a lot of people who wore themselves out. And um, <clears throat> OK, I started in Pennsylvania, small town, no interest in politics, went to art school, uh, was, had one foot in theater and one foot in art had wonderful jobs, wonderful, exciting jobs, but never realized um, until I had done five years of television in Washington, WTOP, um, and that it was, I was not afraid to speak truth to power, mm -hmm. shall we put it that way. Mm -hmm. It never occurred to me. I mean, people were people. And if they were lying, if they were, um, or we'll just say lying, most of them lied. Um, it was not a tragic thing for me to say, I'm sorry, but that is not the truth. And um, to make it as short as possible, Tom and I both ended up at Catholic University. And oh, um, was that? I met her, I, my. Uh, first memory of Angela was going to uh, the Catholic Youth Theater, which, which that and the National were the only things in town mm -hmm. for theater. And uh, she had the lead in Antigone, you know, the Greek. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I came here to oh, do the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it, was, um, it was very exciting. I always wanted to do, I had done a lot of community theater, but not the Greeks and not Shakespeare. Actually, I'm not crazy about Shakespeare. <laughs> I find them difficult. Um, the Greeks are more right to the point. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very lucky. And in order to eat, I had to have a job. So at that point, they had a, an opening at WTOP, actually CBS. Mm -hmm. And my contract was with CBS to be the woman on a man-woman show. Of course, the man always had the show name. It was the Mark Evans show. And I was his, the woman who did all the other stuff. And uh, it was easy, and I loved it. But it was very like tense-making. What I just found out recently 
was this was a, an hour long show, five days a week, no script. Mm. <laughs> No mm -hmm. script. No so anything. I went there and started talking. And you walk in in the morning and it's advertised a few items, and then I can't imagine mm -hmm. <laughs> doing that. I know. Day yeah. after day. Just, was this just, the late fifties, early? This 60s? was early fifties. Early fifties. Uh, yeah. Okay. The middle. Yeah. Okay. Early fifties. And um, middle fifties. And, and so you you lived elsewhere in D.C. before moving here, or was that? No, we both ended up came, right uh, here. I came from Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. to Catholic University uh, Art Department. I'm interested in sculpture and that sort of right. thing, and got conned into doing the whole B.A. liberal arts, <laughs> liberal right. arts degree thing. <laughs> right. right. So um, I guess jumping ahead to uh, when did you first get wind of the freeway plans and what sort of a jolt was it? Well, Three it was a, it was a jolt. It was an eye-opener. Um, it was part of my ongoing education. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just gotten married and had a little baby and uh, I'm not sure exactly the dates in there, but it was very close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you came home from work saying that um, they were going to build a freeway. And I had a vague idea of how big a freeway was, but I knew what it would do to the community. It was a very interesting community. It was very well integrated. It had originally been white and Baptist, and the blacks moved in who were able to put together enough money to get a little house. There are a lot of those uh, Sears Roebuck houses. And by sheer luck, we found this little old Queen Victorian type thing. And, um, and Tom said, they're going to put a freeway through. And I thought, I've never done this before, but I'm going to write a letter to, to Briner. We had no government to write to, really. We just had Matthias. Um, Senator Matthias? Yeah, no. Or his congressman? No, yeah, no. Um, Different person. He was, um, I'm saying, Mathis. Oh. I, you know, of the, the guy, he was from the Navy. And, and the first name mentioned is Walter Tobriner, who was what Walter was called, City mm -hmm. what was his title? He was uh, the three administrators, commissioners. Uh, commissioners. Right. And they were appointed by the White yeah. House. And a man named Duncan, who was black, to make it all balance. Mm -hmm. And um, the letter I got, I wrote to De Bruyner because I chose him. Um, De Bruyner's letter back to me was kind of um, a put down, sort of like you aren't really bright enough to understand how good this is for you. It's going to be wonderful, and all the rest of it. And I thought, what's wonderful about it? Mm -hmm. You know, well, well, what good is it going to do me? It's going to have huge ramps, and it was really being built, and many suburban people said so, so that they and their families could run downtown, mm -hmm. shop, go to the theater, and go home again. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay if it doesn't destroy a community that is one of the oldest communities in the city, mm -hmm. and had... Um, its own little history, its own right to live, mm -hmm. and it was going to be whoosh, gone. You're talking about Brooklyn in particular. Brooklyn. And how close would it have been to your uh, house here? There? It would have been about uh, where the metro we is. Could now. Count the yes. Yes. Where the metro is now. That was block. to be uh, 25. What, what was it? 25 lanes, I think, of traffic going through there, including. Oh, in a, in a, in a ditch right down with the railway and going right out through Sam Abbott's home out there. In Tacoma Park. Park. Yes. Tacoma Park. So yeah. the so first... That really started that whole ECTC thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when I heard that there was going to be a meeting in Tacoma Park about the freeway going through Tacoma Park, I thought, well, it's going to come here too. I went out. Someone shoved testimony and said, get up there and read it because that person can't come. And by the time I finished reading the testimony, I was sold. I realized what the whole thing meant. Mm 
-hmm. And um, shortly after that, and I can't remember exactly when, I met Sam Abbott and his wife and two kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we started having meetings here, right across the street, which was wonderful for in me. Church. Yeah, okay. in that church. Mm -hmm. And I had the, they gave me the keys to the first floor, perfect for meetings. And um, what's the name of the church? It is has undergone many What's changes. changes. Yeah, yeah, it has changed. Yeah. It, it was a Methodist. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and the uh, pastor there was John the Moat. <laughs> John Moat. <laughs> who recently died. But um, the years that he was there, and that was rather a long time, he was very open. Mm -hmm. And um, so the week, the meeting seemed to me to go on every week. I mean, it was just oh, it all did. the time. Oh, Every week. Yeah. And I was on the phone to Sam every day. Now, initially, how many people were at these meetings? It was a fairly small group, wasn't it? At the start it's work? hard to imagine yeah. that it wasn't always a fairly large group mm -hmm. uh, because it was the only meeting in town. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people would come, from you know, all from all over. From We had a lot of help from Tacoma Park. And uh, not necessarily the people lived in the next block. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that mm -hmm. uh, restricted to just the people who might lose their homes. Mm -hmm. Because, and I have checked this since, the uh, Federation of Civic Associations, which in those days was all black, mm -hmm. um, had already determined to organize. But they were not they were not quite up to the job of bringing in white groups. Mm -hmm. So here was Sam Abbott, who was white, and Lebanese, just like Nader, mm -hmm. and um, white people of all sorts coming. We had Birchide sitting down with the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. and um, they had the common single focus, which is the only way you can organize. Mm -hmm. That is it one focus. And Sam was quite right when he said, not another inch of freeways. Mm -hmm. Well, people are used to compromise. Mm -hmm. They love thinking they're compromising. And I think I have it down here somewhere, one of my notes, because I would tell them over and over, there can be no compromise unless there are equal advantages on either side. There were Sam no advantages. You can't be a little bit pregnant. <laughs> yeah, you can't be a little bit pregnant. That was very good one. Thanks, Tom. Who, who were some of the names you remember of people who uh, attended those meetings, who were really most active as well as some uh, that weren't, weren't as, uh, involved? I'm not sure when uh, Everett Scott, mm -hmm. who has died within the last year, I believe, who was the head of the Federation of Civic Associations, he was, it was rather tragic when he died about a year ago. He had been mm -hmm. gradually getting less and less eyesight, uh, but never, never wavered. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he would come, um, Johnny Wilson, another black guy with a low level job in the government. I think Everett Scott was a postal worker. Um, I it's, you mentioned Reggie Booker. Reggie uh, Booker was yeah. later. Yeah, Reggie later. was oh, later, okay, yes. Right. Reggie wasn't there mm -hmm. in the beginning. Okay. Um, but the thing about it for me, and, and well, Tom was teaching all the time, uh, but supportive all the way. Um, what can I say? The, it grew. It, oh, yeah, you got arrested once. We are taking 69 homes along. They, they had taken. 69 homes along the path illegal, next to the truck. Illegal action on the part of the yeah. city council. They, they had, had no a demonstration one time. I think there were as many places there were people <laughs> demonstrating. And um, I put on my old carpenter's overalls, a, a union carpenter before I got to teaching. And uh, we opened the, the, the property, one, one of the houses. They're all boarded up, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. And uh, went in and uh, the, the police followed us in and said, uh, anybody remains in here will be arrested. So most of them left. 
myself and Sam Abbott and two others were arrested and hauled downtown to the, the district building. What that big one was, mm -hmm. the police. Yes. And uh, I found out that I had a record. And the record was that earlier I had not painted my barn out in the back here. It's a carriage house. And I didn't get it done in time. I was doing it myself. <laughs> So a policeman came, arrested me, hauled me off. It cost me $25 fine, but I had a record. <laughs> wow. Well, that was because Brooklyn had been redlined at that point. Mm -hmm. This all coincided with Negro remo removal mm -hmm. in Southwest. Yeah, so This must have been early, very early 60s. Mm -hmm. early 60s. Oh, yes, yeah, 61. I started. Could we stop here for one second? Most oh, of the time. Order. No, I loved it because I realized this, this is... This is what it's like to be an American. Mm -hmm. This is what people are up against who see injustice and want to do something about it, whatever injustice it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So redlining? Yes, you mentioned yeah. redlining. Yes. Redlining is mm -hmm. um, when the city planners, and I always say that in quotes, because city planners work only for developers. They're not interested in the city, really. Oh, you might find the odd one here and there, but on the whole, they don't. And when they decide to remake a section of the city, in which this case, it was Southwest, we called it Negro removal, because it was a hideous swampland of poverty, and they wanted to attract well-paid upper-class people. So to get rid of them, they had to have places to sort of send them. And um, it kind of coincided at the same time that, that they decided they would go through with a, almost a SWAT team and make every person who owned a house in Ward 5, which had a lot of industrial parts of it, areas of it, that the, um, they would have to make their houses up to code. And at that point, some of them had lived here long enough to really need maybe some work done on a front porch or maybe a part of a roof fixed. Well, they really hit them hard by not giving mortgages first, redlining, um, against giving anybody a chance to move into the house. And a lot of the people were dependent on their children for a little bit of help, who had moved to the suburbs already. And so this was ripe for getting rid of people. And that would make people, you know, who were being booted out one place, tried to get into another. It was a kind of a running the people around the city the way they wanted to so they could have areas of the city they wanted to improve and build. Mm -hmm. And thousands of houses were torn down in the southwest, right? And then, yeah. Yeah. And then here, no, yeah. Cracking, yeah. cracking down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember going to a Catholic organization down at 7th Street, Southeast, and it was it was a, a, a interracial thing, and it was quite bad. I mean, they had these courts, an inner court around a, a pump in the middle, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that was really a primitive kind of living in there. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to get rid of it, and they did. And they built those nice condos, all those there. townhouses, and mm -hmm. that very few people ended up moving into. We've got one of the last, they moved in I don't know, initially. Yeah. yeah. there's only one bank that would give us any, um, mm -hmm. um, would give us a mortgage and we couldn't wait to pay it off. And the effect of the redlining was what then for? Yeah, that's how I got arrested. Uh, don't yeah. pay the, yeah, didn't, didn't paint, paint the barn, barn fast yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, that was it. He yeah. didn't paint it fast enough. The house was in excellent condition. We're only the third owners and it was built in 19, 1900. 1900. Mm -hmm. And um, we were fortunate. It had, was built by an architect who had built 
a few other houses that we know of. Well, and being a carpenter, uh, I knew a damn good construction mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it held up very well. I built the greenhouse on the side. Mm -hmm. The, um, what about redlining that I've left out? I don't know. Mm. But it was a decision on the part of um, the so-called city planners that um, mortgages would not be given mm -hmm. by the banks to mm -hmm. people who wanted to move here because they had other plans for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It also had to do with uh, the cost of housing, which the appraisers said this was older stock and best to buy a new building that our mm -hmm. people on the board of directors of the bank were builders and they wanted to encourage people to move out to the suburbs. I was never privy to that conversation, but it makes perfect sense. But then I guess the how the price of uh, real estate varied and banks weren't going to make loans in areas where prices were falling. So they, yeah, they it's kind of an urban renewal and, move uh, on the bank. So, mm -hmm. it, what was the bank you had gotten your loan from? Do you remember? <coughs> Pardon? Um, perpetual. Perpetual. Oh, it was perpetual. But the only one that was given loans to this area. In, in what especially year? to whites. <laughs> what year was that? 61. 61. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam Abbott, and at some point, I guess, to address the 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 question uh, was there uh, whether there were any attempts to smear the group because of, of Sam and his yes, political background. Absolutely. Uh -huh. absolutely. How did that play out? How did that work? Um, we kind of ignored it. We trusted him. We knew he was right. We knew well, he was I'd like I was to wondering who, who initiated this. Sam yeah. initi Sam warned us and we didn't really believe him that we had been infiltrated. Oh yeah, we knew, yes. we knew that. Yes. We knew that just watched their shoes. <laughs> well, they wear just That's true. So we yeah, found well, out the, later the, we had been infiltrated by the FBI. We had we won a lawsuit. You oh, from Freedom of Information. Yeah, yeah. Freedom of Information. Not today, but sometimes I'd love to see. But those. I don't think we ever got it. Oh, you didn't read it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Would, would be interesting. I think Sam did. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And and we we um. We were supported by a lot of other figures at that time, like Julius Hobson, mm -hmm. and um, oh, Marion Barry figure in. Ah, uh, yes, late, yes. Marion came yes. later with the boy bus boycott and all that. But um, can I say this for publication? I recognized what his aim was. He was from SNCC, mm -hmm. yes. Students Student Nonviolent. Yes. Committee. Um, he, um, we needed him and he needed us. Mm -hmm. And within our boundary lines of absolute adherence to our constitutional rights, we never did anything, we never initiated any um, action that could possibly have been criticized. Neither did Barry. As far as I know, he had personal problems. That's another matter. Mm -hmm. But there was a point at which he very much wanted to get to be mayor. And I, th was he council first? School board I, I, council mayor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how he went. Yeah. Okay. We, um, he supported us because he knew we were right. And also that we had by far the largest body of voters with us. Mm -hmm. And so there was one very, very painful night when the blacks, I say that, I don't use African American, and I apologize if this offends anyone, but that's what blacks called themselves mm -hmm. in those days. And they had a meeting downtown to which even Sam could not go mm -hmm. to decide whether they would stay anti-free way or whether they would start breaking up because there were always people who were willing to um, be bought off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I can we'd see them they'd be in the picket line with us and then suddenly they'd put a sign on their back practically I'm for sale <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so there was a lot of the mm -hmm. messing around the edges but the heart of the the heart of the organization was pure <laughs> and was dedicated and committed and whatever word you want to use, uh, we never doubted 
we we knew and the longer we worked at the issue the more sure we were we didn't have this off again on again so and so said such and such you know maybe we should rethink that we had to be careful of being infiltrated by not only um, FBI. the FBI but um, groups that wanted to use us mm -hmm. um, they even came here from Europe to visit us and talk to us and study our methods I remember a group from Switzerland that met the church over there and just wanted to know how we did it you know mm -hmm. and I can only say over and over again you need a Sam Abbott <laughs> <laughs> you do uh, th this this brings up something actually uh, as to how you divided up the, the kind of work I mean what 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 on a daily or weekly basis what you would do what Sam would do what you know others in the in movement we were do. on the phone to each other mm -hmm. uh, Sam me um, not Peter Craig so much though he figures yeah, very well, large and yes yeah, yes yeah. Um, there weren't very many in the hardcore mm -hmm. and we were on the phone to each other daily because we never knew what the government was going to do next mm -hmm. whether it was going to be a federal action whether it was going to be a I, I remember these things because they're so hysterically funny uh, we had a big public hearing about something and fortunately we heard about it by accident and we I think it was the man who always spoke for the truckers who came welded with martinis and um, he would threaten the blacks in the audience to well, take your mortgage you shut off whatever you do with mortgages you know uh, he really would stand up there and threaten them mm -hmm. and then at one point someone said well when did you advertise this public hearing? Mm -hmm. And he said, New Year's Eve in the classified section. I was at home in bed reading the classified section, New Year's Eve, and it was there. Mm -hmm. Well, he was not in bed alone, that's pretty sure. Uh -huh. And if he was, he was drunk. So, <laughs> you know, we couldn't take it seriously that they would send a man like that. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't take it seriously. We, well, we did take it very seriously that they would not announce a public hearing if they could avoid it. Mm -hmm. So we had to be everywhere all the time. The Washington Post is very pro. Yes. Oh, oh, absolutely. The Washington pro Post way. looked for any possible way they could damage our yes. credibility or our right to do whatever we were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it was uh, beginning to go up and down the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I well remember picking up the phone in the kitchen, and it was the New York Times. And uh, <clears throat> this man said, well, um, I understand, Mrs. Rooney, that the natives are uh, getting restless. Great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, that kind of thing. Yes or someone else would call who had a business on Rhode Island, but was not a Brooklander, <clears throat> would call and say, um, I want to bring coffee and donuts over when you have your demonstration. Uh -huh. <laughs> How many people do you uh -huh. think you'll have? Uh -huh. You know, there were just, Great you never story. knew who it was. Yes. Uh, there were people with British accents. That's very, very, very important when you're doing uh, warfare in those years. Mm -hmm. A British accent always meant you were very smart, mm -hmm. very well educated. Mm -hmm. And so they would have, I went to a hearing on air pollution. I couldn't fully understand all the details of the air pollution, you know, I knew the, I knew the basic thing. But don't you know they had a man from England, mm -hmm. London, saying these freeways will not have any harm whatsoever to do. <laughs> Never. Mm -hmm. I had already been through uh, a hearing in Georgetown that was held by the, um, what's the um, 
clean air society that was always wearing the little... Oh, the American Lung Association. Lung Association. Right. Lung Association. They were holding a meeting, and I listened and listened. It was a packed room. And um, never once did they mention the automobile. It was cigarettes. <laughs> it was anybody. Blame anybody. Never blame the automobile for air pollution. Mm -hmm. So by the nearly the end of the meeting, I got up, and I knew I was in hostile territory. They didn't want to hear it. And I said, I think you're missing the point here. It is the automobile and the freeways and the buses and the trucks. That's where your major source of air pollution is coming from. You've got to look at it. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of fussing around. Oh, no, no, we don't want to. And then a guy got up from Rockefeller Institute, a young scientist in New York who had come down. And he said, she's right. <laughs> I felt so relieved, and then he took over. These days, it is exactly the same. With with global the car, air yes, pollution, yeah. you know, worse and worse. And mm -hmm. You have to do something planet wide. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't hear anybody really talk talking about, about automobile. Yeah. Okay. That's it. What were they telling people that air pollution came from? Cigarettes. Just cigarettes. Yeah, that was the big thing. That's cigarettes was big. Cigarettes and. and uh, Wild, wild women. Electricity for me, you know, what do you call them? Um, Car mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the Lung Association <clears throat> had um, <clears throat> an agenda that was large and kind of, I would say, parochial. Mm -hmm. They did not look far beyond the immediate air pollution thing. I had a friend in Virginia who um, mm -hmm. has since junked or, well, no, she didn't junk the issue. She decided she wanted to be a lawyer. A lot of, a lot of people started out working with us and, oh, no, I'm not going to do this hard work for nothing. I'm going to be a lawyer and get a mink coat. Mm -hmm. And she did. But um, she swept the school buses, handfuls of dirt and dust, full of pollution, particulate matter. Lead. And pollution. Yeah. Gasoline will lead it in the school, oh, yes. in the school bus. There's one little thing I want to add here because I think it, it always bothers me. They thought we were just against the freeway. We were always for public transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would say freeway yes, subway, or freeway no, subway yes. It turned out to be called the Metro. And I have since learned not since learned, but at some point it hit me, the freeway had a highway trust fund mm -hmm. into which billions of money were poured. Federal dollars. Federal dollars. Mm -hmm. That could be, they, they um, scored in linear and, mm -hmm. you know, lines. The whole of the United States was going to be covered. Right. And they would say things like, well, we'll get the farmers out of the mud. And that, of course, loved, agribusiness loved that. Mm -hmm. um, things like that would happen. But they never recognized that we were the ones who wanted a metro trust fund then, you know? Yeah, and the highway trust fund was off limits to any public right, transportation. Right, right. They could not do anything for public transportation. So um, there was good reason for lots of problems over the buses. They did not fund public transportation. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually Sam Abbott at one point, and he had a very solid way of reasoning it out. Public transportation should be free. Mm -hmm. Anybody should be able to get on public transportation, no matter what. And of course we worked that issue, but they wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. uh, Metro, uh, as long ago as, or as short a time ago as maybe eight or ten years, uh, had no idea mm -hmm. what I was talking about when I would say we need buses integrated with Metro. Mm -hmm. And we need smaller buses integrated into larger buses with Metro. <clears throat> he had no idea. And yet he was sent by Metro to talk to the people on 12th Street at a mm -hmm. fair, 
you know. But uh, ignorance, <laughs> ignorance was heavy, mm -hmm. and um, people were hired and never trained, and their eyes were never open, and they never understood, and were still suffering the effects of all of that. Things about uh, Sam Abbott, getting back to him, um, besides being a brilliant organizer, he brought his great artistic talents to the, uh, I mean, that was probably the most visible mm -hmm. thing about the people who came across. Tell us a little about uh, his white men's roads through black men's yeah. houses and other artistic uh, endeavors. Yeah, his cartoons and also the uh, very formal, informative map. And this is one of them. This is one, yeah. 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 I think... By the way, I don't know if you've said, when I've said ECTC, I don't know if we've said yet that it stands for Emergency Committee on the Transportation, Transportation Crisis. Crisis. Right. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. We'd stuff. put out <laughs> thousands of them. Yeah. Yes. I was very familiar with going underground the old post office and having the tons of mail weighed that we'd... Yeah, this has some great names on it, too, of people who are I, lending their name to the... Uh, Huh. But there's a lot of this. Um, I have to get to this guy. Um, people in other parts of the country who we became great friends with them. This is uh, Dr. Brown, not the George Brown from California, but Dr. Mm -hmm. Brown, the uh, teacher at Ames. Iowa University, Iowa State, yeah. and he did this himself. Mm -hmm. And the third national conference on the transportation crisis, George Brown, mm -hmm. transportation Catholic PhD, U. yeah, mm -hmm. at Catholic U. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I found that in among all the others, we were just going to. Uh, Oh, her block came through. Good. Yeah, I'm glad he was out of step with the editorial writers. <laughs> he has his own mind made up. Her block was wonderful. And uh, I'm not sure who wrote the words. He did the drawing. I don't know, but I have to tell you about the story of this because it's, 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 it's a little gem. There was something called the Democratic Study Committee. And I'm not sure of the... Uh, senator who, or congressman who headed it up and put it together. But they were going to have their annual bash at, we'll say, the Shoreham. I think it was the Shoreham because the Shoreham, I think, is the one that has the balconies. Anyway, we had this, and we wanted to really make them listen to it, the song. And so um, we got all dressed up, those of us who decided to do it, just like they were dressed up for their function. And pearls, dresses, nice. The men looked nice. And we mingled with them in the lobby. In the meantime, some of us slipped into the dining room where the plates were already set, and we put a copy of this on every plate. <laughs> you wouldn't notice it, you know, you just... And then we assembled in one of those little alcoves that looked down on the main dining room, or whatever the room was. It was a huge room. Mm -hmm. And our friend Fred Hewitt, who is a musician and dedicated, dedicated to this issue. What do you do when you tune? You tune? Mm -hmm. You tune. And we broke into song, and we sang the song. <laughs> well, they looked up. They couldn't believe it. There the words were, and we're singing it. I think we sang two, two uh, choruses, and then we vanished. <laughs> Quietly vanished. Can you tell us the words? Hmm? Oh, yeah, do you want to read the words that are on there? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, do you want to read them? Do you want to read them? Do you want to read, read, read the words out loud? Right. Oh! Yeah. Or do you want to sing them? them? No, I don't want to sing them. I, my singing... <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh beautiful for spacious roads that spread from slum to slum. And it's great. 
<laughs> but do read it. I, uh, I think there are more copies somewhere, and um, I don't want to lose that one. I'm going to pick up here. You were so The rest of this. The smog is gray, the homes decay, but see the prophets come. Suburbia, suburbia, there's profit there to glean. Pol pollute the air, but they don't care. They're selling gasoline. Oh, beautiful for interstate, for glorious 9010. Don't heed the people's picket signs, but just cement them in. <laughs> America, America, for shed his grace on thee. Black and white, unite and fight, to defeat, defeat highway lobby. That's good. <laughs> it is good. It's really good. Well, you can imagine, the Democratic Study Group was not exactly against us, but, you know, it was an opportunity to hit them. That's and sad. that's what we did. Um, in the um, little samples, in this whole uh, uh, fight, there were often times when you were really just moments away or days away from losing. I mean, where it looked like they were going to start construction. But I, I, you, earlier, you were telling us off camera, which I think it was a 1969 city council meeting where the council was backed into mm -hmm. this position of you're not going to get any freeway money, I mean, sorry, not going to get any subway <coughs> money unless you <coughs> approve right. the North Central Freeway, the yeah. Northeast Freeway, the Three Sisters Bridge, yeah. everything else. And they, and it was quite a raucous session yeah. and you were, you were, is that the one you were there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So if mm -hmm. you could tell us a yes. little about that night. Well, the, you have to begin with the fact that for the city council to send us a telegram or call us and say, come to the public hearing, you know, we knew they were going to um, pass an illegal vote. I can't tell you now which one. There were many, many times when they did something they really had no right to do, and everyone was against it, but it was, if there was no one there to object to it, it would go through. So. We knew something was up, and when we went down there, the whole of this, the old city council building, which has been renewed and changed for the worse, believe me, <laughs> uh, was lined or surrounded by paddy wagons with the engines running. So then we knew you go in that building. You won't come out <laughs> except into a paddy wagon. Um, there was a wide spectrum of people there. There were ladies from DuPont Circle in dresses. There were suburbanites. There were troublemakers. I call them people who acted like they were in dashikis, but their shoes were shine, so you knew they weren't. Um, all kinds of things like that. Uh, it was a heated audience because we knew something was up. And I remember, I think that was the one where I had a pile of information papers and I just walked right straight back to where the city council was hiding and gave them all the papers and you know, went back to my seat. Um, someone, and no one will ever own up to it. We don't know who did it. We don't know why. We didn't need to do it. We were ready for anything that was going to come through an ashtray. And that's all it took. The city council then called the SWAT team in, which were manned and ready to go. And they just rammed through the uh, whole hearing room. And the trick was, if you were afraid, that meant you were attacking them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So putting your hands up when you're being attacked or someone's coming at you was a sign that you were really going to hit them. Mm -hmm. And so everybody got arrested. They had, and one woman from DuPont Circle, as innocent as can be, they ripped her dress right down the back to get them out into the hall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for some Angela reason. Angela is standing there in front of the council, reading them out about this. And the, pl the policeman was going to arrest her, and they just said no. Yeah. The council said Check. no. Yeah, we, yes. no, we had a, we, we had, and then some idiot lost it. We got, we got the um, film that they were taking, mm -hmm. and you can clearly see, if you could find it, yeah, mm -hmm. that someone said, 
take her, get rid of her, and someone, don't take her, don't take her. And it's oh, like they never Sam wanted to arrest Sam chair. either. Sam and three other people got up on the top of the chairs and started reading them out. And of course, that started the whole thing. They were mm. expecting it, and throw every, everybody out, or you're going to be arrested. Is this is the one where Sam pounded his shoe on the, or was that a different one? Oh, that was a different one. Yeah, that, was yeah. a different <laughs> that, that was Han. Han was, was the Han chairman the chair. then. Yeah. Han shoe. Oh, Hans Could, Schu, yeah. of course, yes. <laughs> Hans Schu. Who were some of the people who were on the council at the time? Do you recall? Was it, there was Han was Heckinger on? Oh, Heckinger. Yeah. I have great respect for him. I never, we had very few um, people once we got a city council and a mayor. Mm -hmm. I, I liked um, Washington. Walter Washington. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. He was slow. I said, be grateful he's slow. Put Barry in there and you, sh you know, you're dead. <laughs> Don't vote for Barry. But nevertheless, uh, Heckinger learned. This is John Heckinger. Who John was. Heckinger yeah. of the Heckinger Stone, Stone or, you know, the big, uh, yes, yes, yes. Now, John was a very good man. He listened mm -hmm. and he paid attention. Mm -hmm. And that rarely happened. They would look at you sort of like, mm, you know, <laughs> what are you going to say now? I remember one time they brought that, there was a guy who was a big builder, big builder for the whole country, really, and they had him come to listen to the testimony. And I always ran over. I tried not to, but I couldn't help it. And they'd have to stop me. So Heckinger stopped me and I said, all right. I went back to my seat, and this guy from, he lived in, eventually in Santa Fe, but he had a lot of building. He was, a, a, I'm sorry, some of these names, there's so many. Um, he said, bring her back. I want to hear the rest of her story, because I was reading out the post, and what they would tell mm -hmm. the post to say. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did. Mm -hmm. I said, I feel like a little schoolgirl, but I finished. And um, Eisen is the, Jack, do you remember Jack, Jack Eisen? Eisen? Yes. He was assigned to follow us everywhere when we were in a meeting. Mm -hmm. And one of those hot summer nights when we had a meeting, after it was over, he came up to me by the elevators and he said, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And I said, quit, Eisen, quit. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, sent, he was sent to cover something in the suburbs. Oh, oh is that? I'm too excited. That's, white man's road that's road one picture. Yeah, I it used to be, a white, uh, that was Sam, white man's road through a black man's bedroom, and they changed it to a home. <laughs> right, right. Why did he have bedroom in the house? He, um, he, he was... <laughs> I, I think I mentioned to you there's a, a website that is all about freeways, only it's by a guy who loves freeways. Oh! So it's, so it's always how you evil people were, right. you were staging riots uh -huh. to, uh, right. un, you know, to undermine the, the, yes. the wonderful the right highway <laughs> people. Um, and, uh, it, it, but, it, but he has, but the thing that's valuable about it is he has a lot of things posted on there. In fact, he has some of Sam Abbott's poster art about, I say, well, this is great. I don't care if the guy doesn't like it. He's doing a valuable research. Uh, well, I told you about the, uh, the Ken Burns no. freeway. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ken Burns, and this was, you know, history by then. Uh, and I was in California visiting my sister, and it was, it was on television. I went crazy. They didn't know why I was going crazy. It was terrible. I had been interviewed at length by Ken Burns' people. He always used Florentine Films. That was the name of the company he used, mm -hmm. and they were good, and he did some good things. I'm not arguing about that, but he did a terrible job on the freeway issue. The, the anti-freeway people were like little old white-haired ladies sitting in their front yards with shotguns, they ain't gonna make me leave my house, you know. I thought, 
what is this? <laughs> and he didn't use a thing I said, nothing that uh, some guy who was running a transportation on a grant transportation committee later on, uh, they didn't use anything he said. And when I got home, I looked it up and I found out the whole thing was paid for by General Motors. Yes, <laughs> yes, no. yes. Which was it, I'm sorry. Ken Burns. Uh, Ken Burns. Uh, Burns uh, you know, freeway. He did oh. a documentary on freeways. It was a big deal. I think I mentioned that the recent PBS um, uh, uh, documentary on drones was partly sponsored by Lockheed Martin. Oh, <laughs> I can't. So read. Sort of a, I get so uh, upset you know, when I read about that about that kind of thing now. Thing. You know, I, it, uh, it just hurts. So, uh, any beer takers. Yeah, beer. I would take a soft drink or, or, a, a, Coke? or a tea. Coke. Or a tea. Yeah. Oh, a tea. We yeah. have yeah. beer, Coke, tea. He's the chef tea. today. He would, be, he would be wonderful. He's the chef because I shake yeah, too much. Tea. Two teas. Three teas. Three teas. Three teas. Said a, Three teas. Uh, uh, decaf. She or said a beer. A beer. Good for you. A beer. <laughs> He's a beer. He has beer every day for lunch, and our daughter does this neat thing. She um, orders a case a month and they come every month and they're the weirdest sounding beers <laughs> but they all taste good all right all over the country oh, I, I just sip them i sip if he if it's real dark i sip it because i love guinness yeah it's oh, too much for me i like some of those midwestern um microbrew there are so, so many good. i know I there are right some. near the uh, Sam Adams in Boston. I'm from Boston. So oh, Sam Ab Adams, yeah, yes. Right. Yes, I know people are too. very fond. We, They're good. we um, ordinarily, we drink, um, oh my, L, L, L. Angela, you say you have tea? No, thanks, Sonny. What did, what, what's our yingling? Oh, yeah. And what gets me is, when I was a little tiny kid, Yingling was bottled in my little town, and they also sold ice cream. Pottsville. So that's how I knew. Pottsville. Pottsville. Lehigh. Pottsville. Well, now it's in Pottsville. It's a it's a German beer yeah. from yeah. Pennsylvania. Not the Chinese beer that's pronounced Yingling, but yeah, this is Y E U N G L I N G. Yeah, Y U E N G Yingling L I N G. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I used to laugh because people here didn't know how to pronounce it. I said, that's yingling. But they started out with ice cream, as far as I was concerned. Right, that's, that's a funny combination. Yeah, actually. it is funny. Uh, are we back? Yeah. Huh? Um, well, but just when, when we were talking earlier about the, the city council disruption, and, and maybe I'm jumping ahead of it here, but there came a time when the construction was actually due to start on the Three Sisters Bridge, and there was some action going on. Plenty there. of action, yes. but yes. you know what really saved us? God. <laughs> Climate change, whatever you want to call it. Agnes. The Hurricane Agnes tore up the underpinnings uh, where the three rocks were. Mm -hmm. And we did have a huge demonstration there before I was, that. I was there. You were there? there? Good for you. Did, did Julie Hobson was there was in a wheelchair. Big, was a really big oh one. my gosh. Was, was that the one where the, the people actually lay down in front of the bulldozers and tied themselves to trees? There was some of that at some point. Uh, no, you know, I don't. We, we weren't yeah. into that. We, um, we just marched. Mm -hmm. People would sit on their front porches and spit at us. But I don't know. I don't remember. No, I never. You don't remember, yeah. I never they, did they that. They mentioned that in this article at some point. Some did I? Or another that that uh, that people had, but it may have been a different. There were so many different actions. I think. That well, most of them were under yeah. control. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people had a big problem. Uh, opposing anything in this city. Mm -hmm. They really did. Mm -hmm. They really were scared. I, I felt like I have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to... I had a guy come here, oh God, I was interviewed. I'm in so many magazines and so many books. And one time a guy came who lived somewhere out in Northwest 
and he sat on that sofa and I'm telling him why I am fighting the freeways and this is well after they had started mm -hmm. and he asked me questions and then I would tell him well what book did you read I said I didn't read a book <laughs> there's no book you just know you know and um, I realized I started to cry mm -hmm. and I said I think maybe it was after I said, well, what would you do if they told you, get out of your house, go somewhere? Mm -hmm. He said, well, I guess I'd go. Mm -hmm. And then I, later on, I said, I think I'd better make some tea. Mm -hmm. And we drank tea and he left, and I don't know what he was writing for. Mm -hmm. But he clearly never thought of it in terms of, I'm a citizen. Oh, right. I have something to say here, mm -hmm. and you should listen. And you appeared um, before in a lot of different bodies, uh, I mean, giving testimony, speaking. Uh, I remember yeah. once you mentioned that you had some admiration for the uh, woman at the National Capital Planning Commission. Libby Ho, Libby, Libby Rowe. Rowe, yeah. Libby Rowe, Why was that? What did she, she was very good. She was married to James Rowe, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the Turks that came in with FDR. Right, right. And uh, she was a lovely woman and she had courage and she took her job seriously. She was also head of the Committee of 100. And was it created to fight the freeways, the Committee of 100? What was, where did they figure in on this? Uh, the Committee of 100 is a mysterious bunch and is no longer there as far as I'm concerned. Very few of them are still there. Yes. Uh, they are big on zoning, right. uh, those who are active. Um, they have allowed people like Doran McGrath, mm -hmm. and I can't think of some of the others, to in, not infiltrate, but take over. And because of their powerful positions in universities, what they say means something. Mm -hmm. um, they asked me, I was invited to please join, because I had been working so hard with Peter Craig and oh, Libby Rowe. Yes. That's right, yes. Cleveland Park. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Craig uh, initially worked on a case that stopped a freeway or got plans laid for several years that was going to cut right. It was going to go Park. down Wisconsin Avenue. Right, right. And he and some other people uh, stopped it because they had friends on the hill. He was an attorney at uh, Covington and Burling. Yes, and he also was with Southern Railway when mm -hmm. I knew him. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and Sam. Abbott called him up on him and yes. said, you helped to stop the freeway. I don't know the words, but I've heard yes. the story. Um, going down northwest. Well, we have a big freeway coming down northeast that is going to hurt the blacks bad. And Peter said, in his own, these are his words, and as a good Quaker, I could not say no. Mm -hmm. So from then on, mm -hmm. yeah. I would go over there at night, hot, sweaty nights, and file things for him and work in his little office. And uh, he really put a lot into it, and so did Bob Kennan. Mm -hmm. After hey, He was a was wilderness. Bob Kennan was the son, a nephew, of George Kennan, who was the okay. ambassador to Russia. Mm -hmm. And um, and they brought cases. He did against. pro bono, mm -hmm. pro bono work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he would come over here. There was a guy, a man, gentleman, named Bernie Pryor, who was head of the uh, Brooklyn Civic Association. Actually, Tom joined and was um, no. No. vice president. Vice. Break the color barrier for seven years. So we, we built friends, you know, and, but Bernie Pryor was well respected and he was thrilled when Barry called him the mayor of Brooklyn. But that didn't matter. He, he was the kind of man that he could take a position against freeways in a, in a nice, intelligent way and bring a lot of his kind of people with him. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, that and Everett Scott. Everett Scott was head of the Federation. Mm -hmm. 
And I just recently came across some letters he wrote, and it really bothered me when he died about a year ago that all they referred to him in the paper was a postal worker. Mm -hmm. He was immensely important. Mm -hmm. And he never gave up and he never stopped, even after the freeway stopped. People started, uh, the last time we went to a meeting, he was almost blind. His wife took him everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, he, um, some people wanted to start a new organization. You know, every now and then you get them in a community. Oh, we're going to start this. And we didn't know what they were all about, but we knew what they were after. And uh, <clears throat> Scotty called me and I went. And he made his speech, and some of the others made their speeches. The people on, on the side, you know, who are running it. When it got to me, I just said, whatever Scotty said is right. <laughs> Double it. <laughs> and that's it. Mm -hmm. And they never did have an organization. Mm -hmm. But he knew enough about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the amazing things, at least looking at this historically, is that it was a really... Uh, successful black-white coalition in the city at a time when those things didn't happen. Exactly. If at exactly. All, can you talk a little bit how, the, how mm -hmm. that developed and, and what effect you think it had on... It affected because I think the genius of it was a common enemy. Whites and blacks realized the damage it would do to the city. And if you have a common enemy and a common goal, and you don't mess it up. I think we talked about the statehood party one time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you will lose because you will be infiltrated by people who want to use what you have gathered together for their own purposes. You can't have that. Mm -hmm. You just can't have it. Because it is single focus, you said. Single focus. Enemy. Common enemy. Mm -hmm. Single focus, common enemy. I think you once mentioned on the phone to me about um, you also, one thing you did have going, even though these powerful interests are arrayed against you, I think you said you also had the element of surprise mm -hmm. and that they weren't always, they didn't know what to expect from you next. No. Yeah. But we didn't really initiate that much. Mm -hmm. We just, we, we bird dogged them. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go anywhere and sneak a vote by us. Mm -hmm. I, that was where I was fortunate. I didn't really care about money. I'm sorry, I didn't go to work and earn a lot of money. None of my jobs ever, <laughs> ever turned out to be well-paying, but they were really great jobs, boy. Uh, and they all paid off in the end. But um, you asked me a question and I've already okay, gone. But I was wondering, I guess, really, is whether they were a little bit scared of, you know, the white-black coalition on an issue like this, which I'm sure they didn't expect, given all No, they didn't. The and it was tough during the um, riots, mm -hmm. because at that point, Walter was still, Walter Washington was still our mayor. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we needed to pick at his house. We would do that. We would trail them somewhere. They were having a meeting and pick it outside. Mm -hmm. So we were there, and I think the weather was pretty cold. Yeah, and uh, a nice warm machine came up, you know, and Walter got in it and went off. Well, the Post took it that we deliberately did that to take away the police from downtown where the riots were. Yeah. I mean, they, they manipulated yeah. things all the time yes. to make it look like we were the ones who were initiating the action where if there was any, and I think I marked it in that little yellow book, the uh, violence was always on their side. We drove them to violence because we were stubbornly there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had to be, we had our constitutional rights. And uh, that was very important. Tom mentioned that uh, his arrest, did you get arrested at any... No, they wouldn't take me. <laughs> I didn't care. Arrest me. 
Yes, well, that's sort of an insult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I consider it good. They, they wouldn't arrest. Oh, when, 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 we, when Tom got arrested, well, he twice, um, and they had the paddy wagon over where we took down the 16 or mm -hmm. broke into the 69 homes, which are well alive and thriving to this day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they wouldn't put Sam in the paddy wagon. And he had to bang on the doors and say, let me in. Right, yes. yes. Let me in, let me in. I saw in this article that said he was arrested 34 times. He probably said that wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Sam met his wife in jail. Yeah. Is that right? Her father was uh, <clears throat> jail for, I think, the same kind of activity. And so Organizing. So they met in jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, he dropped out his last year in Cornell to join the unions. Mm -hmm. So it was... The union fighter. Yeah. He, just, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, he was going to be an... Well, he was all but getting in the degree as an architect. Um, that was his initial reason for going to Cornell. But by the time he was a senior, he he understood the, the, um, the union issues mm -hmm. and um, they have a lot to answer for what they've done since then. But initially and for many, many years, they were critical. Mm -hmm. See, I come from Pennsylvania, so I go back to the Molly Maguires yeah. right. and yeah. the Pickertons. Yeah. Right. Uh, Did you ever see the movie about them? Yes, Connery I have a cousin who tried to get into it, and yeah. I think he did, yeah. as a bystander. Extra, yeah. yeah, but they crawled all through the woods up in there. Mm -hmm. The um, Sam, um, yeah, he was. But we should mention just for this for people who wouldn't know that Sam later became the mayor of Tacoma. Oh, Park. I have a lot of yeah, stuff so, from that. Yeah, he was. Um, um, the flyers that he put out there were wonderful, with himself behind bars, get this man out of jail and make him mayor. <laughs> it was wonderful. I, I, I have a whole bunch of his stuff. And um, we worked a little, donated a little money, but not much. But he was uh, like no one, well, there's a phrase about it. A man like this will not come around in a hurry. Mm -hmm. You know, he was very special. And um, sure. I, um, he went through a lot of misery in Tacoma Park because as a mayor, he, um, he couldn't do all the things he wanted, but he did a lot. And he knew so many people. He knew Nader. He knew um, <coughs> Pete Seiger. Seeger. 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 Yeah. Um, uh, the folk they thing. Know, they didn't like his style. Oh, they didn't. Style. Oh, yes. Style. 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 Yeah. Same that way. always bothered I, them. I, this is probably getting off the subject, but um, at uh, one of the elections out there, um, uh, that Sam, it was raining and people were coming into the into the uh, city hall parking lot to mm -hmm. to vote and some of them were blocking or honking horns sam was sort of shouting at them get that goddamn car out of here <laughs> and, and a friend of mine who was there at the time said sam those are voters <laughs> don't, don't the voters. <laughs> uh, i yeah. never i never mm -hmm. um yeah. i never um doubted his uh, sense of when to support someone, for instance, as we were, mm -hmm. you know, cheek by jowl mm -hmm. <laughs> with what was going on in Baltimore, Fells Point yes. was under the gun. And, uh, the highway going through yes. there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that was a highly Polish area. It was very ethnic. Yeah. And, um, boy, there two or three stories run it together there. A guy from who was fighting it uh, in Maryland uh, took a trip to Lin London and came back and he was so excited. He had a book that he bought in London 
and it's called direct action. And he brought it to our meetings, and we almost fell over. We did fall over laughing. <laughs> We've been doing it for years <laughs> before they wrote the book, direct action. He didn't quite understand that. But um, Fell's Point is one place where it was so neat. Um, right before we had one of our national transportation coalition meetings, which was very important because we were in touch with, I'd say, eight or ten cities in the country, and they would fan out, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I talk too fast for my own head. Okay. Uh, there's so much. What was it about that that I started? Right before a meeting of the... The American Institute of Architects and their cleverly designed design. What did we? What did they call it? The design concept team, mm -hmm. and they would take architecture students or members or whatever, and they would fan out, and they happened to be on the radio interviewing the women in the houses that would be completely submerged or wiped out mm -hmm. if the freeway th went through Fells Point. Mm -hmm. And it was on the radio. And the question was, well now, Mrs. So-and-so, we know, and they did, need a new school. They were, you know, mm -hmm. that level of society where a new school would be just heaven. Mm -hmm. So would you tell us, do you want to have the school under the freeway? on top of the freeway, or maybe to the right or the left of the freeway, dead in the water. Yes. How can you answer it? Yes. When did you stop beating your wife? Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. And it was on radio. Mm -hmm. And we were having a national meeting, so I used that hard. Because that's what people needed to hear who were not in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. They were not close enough to the source of the power mm -hmm. that was demanding we have the freeways. Mm -hmm. And it's almost laughable to think that Eisenhower supported it because how the hell can you use freeways to evacuate cities? Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't. Do you know that North Capitol Street, which you probably came up on your way over here, you come up North Capitol and hit around, turn around on Michigan. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the worst area you could find. But North Capitol is the exodus route mm -hmm. for any trouble we have in downtown Washington. Well, the council, I mean Congress. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're so dumb. The They're so dumb. Would, yeah. would come out on you. Well, they can't. Yes. It's not. It's not why not? You can't add another lane without taking all the housing. Even then you can't do it. Mm -hmm. And it heads right into MedStar. Mm -hmm. Right <laughs> into MedStar, which is absolutely wall-to-wall -wall yeah. buildings and parking lots. Yeah. So there's no way to get there to Maryland at all. Yeah. Yeah. But that is the designated route. And not long ago, it's only a matter of months. A man who uh, had, had gone into retirement, but who was um, transportation for the global issues of where they have dramatic climate tragedies. Mm -hmm. And he came back here out of retirement, took an office in the Department of Transportation, and I got him on the phone. He actually picked up the phone. Yes. And we talked for an hour. I said, that is not workable. Mm -hmm. And you may have tragedies in every other city, but this is the nation's capital, and you are not prepared at all. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see a little foresight instead of hindsight. Mm -hmm. I had already spent hours on the phone with our Department of Transportation didn't know what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even imagine it. And one of them lived near there. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you mean to say that you do not talk to Homeland Security? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. 
I said, well, I, don't you think you should? Mm -hmm. Well, who would we call? The, that's pretty amazing. The ignorance that continues yeah. is what is so amazing. Right. On the... Um, you want to take a second? Oh, sure. Okay, okay. Oh, back on. <laughs> the um, bringing it to its to the freeway issues conclusion. I mean, a number of developments, court decisions. How did it finally meet its the, the freeway system meet its demise? I, mean, I would say it never would de re well, meet its demise. True, Free mm -hmm. old freeways never die. Mm -hmm. Given the slightest crack in the wall. Mm -hmm given the slightest chance to make money, they'll build them. Mm -hmm. slowed it down with mess. Because we have not stopped yeah. producing automobiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Helen Levitt's book, where Ford was being investigated or testifying mm -hmm. before Congress, someone, I don't know who, said, you mean, Mr. Ford, that we are going to have to provide roads as you provide automobiles ad nauseum? Mm -hmm. And he smiled and said, yes. Mm -hmm. And that holds true, mm -hmm. because the automobiles, there was, a, there was a little documentary about one of the automobile companies, and I dare not guess, doesn't really matter, developed a beautiful uh, prototype of um, a low-burning, low-diesel, whatever it was, mm -hmm. that would be a big improvement. And they produced a whole fleet of them and toured the country with them. And then they took them to a dump and smashed them all up. Mm -hmm. They had no intention of ever, ever mm -hmm. building. It was the, uh, what was the name of That's the big money. That's big that. money. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. But I saw it and I couldn't believe it. And I thought, can they do that? Yes, they can. And yes, they did. Mm -hmm. This, as far as the, in fact, I think when you mentioned about old freeways never die, I remember in the post four or five years ago, and like in the Sunday Outlook section, somebody <coughs> wrote a column oh, yeah. saying we need still need freeways that were defeated uh, back then. Oh, right. But um, it's um, yeah, yeah. I was, but I, as I was, what I was getting at, I guess, in that question was that <clears throat> it finally was in the Ford administration, I guess, when they they ended the that current quest to, uh, to build the freeways because the, the metro money came at some point. I mean, it yeah. was a court decision. Well, just the thing with metro money, and, and this really needs to fit into the whole picture, it's a very complicated picture because you really have to discuss environment. You have to discuss city planning. You have to discuss all kinds of ways in which we get trapped. And one very critical way was the Council of Governments. Whenever you had three states connecting, you had to have all three agree to the freeways, mm -hmm. because the freeways would go all over them. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just say, well, we'll build and then we'll stop, because that state doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. They created the Council of Governments. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Council of Governments is where the money flows. The money has to go through the Council of Governments before it's distributed, and the D D.C. area always gets the short end of the stick. Mm -hmm. In water, just as well. That's true. Same thing in water. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very important... Uh, you, never hear, you never hear the mayor say, uh, we're, having, um, we're having a brownout, or we're, we're, uh, nobody who is in ill health should go out, the air is so bad. They never make those announcements, but the Council of Government knows, but they don't yeah, make it public right. information. Mm -hmm. You should know always mm -hmm. and in detail when things are that bad. They're, it's getting so bad now they're beginning to put it in, but... From, from your um, experience back then, are there other particular lessons you would give to young activists today or middle-aged activists as to that are pursuing some particular good goal uh, as to I'm how, not to, how, how to organize? Yeah, it would be very simple because I, um, I, I can't even dream of coping with what technology has made possible. Mm 
-hmm. And there's where we have to do some heavy thinking. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who's going to do the heavy thinking. But we're in big, big, big trouble because we are right on the cusp of allowing horrendous things to happen to the planet mm -hmm. because we don't know who these brilliant young people are who are conceiving ways in which to get around anything you might want to do as a citizen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the end of the citizen's activity era mm -hmm. has fallen into the hands of the brilliant uses of technology made by people who should not have that kind of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The technocrats. Right? Yeah, but I, and you, a lot of people call themselves technocrats, but they, they can't begin to conceive of the extent to which um, countries, country after country, and I think we talked about this, um, this s relatively small group of people, when you think of the population in the world, mm -hmm. is way, way years ahead in the uses of technology, and at the same time, we have enormous countries in Africa, South America, you can name it, where they are only beginning to, to flex their muscles as citizens. Mm -hmm. So there's this huge gap. And as far as I can see, mm -hmm. the technocrats, the ones who are really, really smart with technology, could very well win mm -hmm. because it takes a long time for a uh, demoralized, destroyed country due to um, the kind of um, powerful money that runs them, um, how they can defeat that in order to get to the age of mm -hmm. using technology to save themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a, it's a very big question. Before I forget it, I wanted to ask Tom about <clears throat> Uh, we talked about the um, the bus boycott, and you did you no, have, I never you had, had you part had, of that. That, was, that yeah. was very early on. Yeah, I think it was really before it was, we really got in with Sam and yeah. and uh, especially it was Booker, a, or not with really Booker. Who? Yeah, I think you said, uh, one of you mentioned that Mary. That was sort of Mary and yeah, Barry's Mary, that's initial his introduction. Initial right. introduction like we 1965. Not, it was his that. initial. Um, yeah. the splash he made that drawed attention to him and uh, he was able to do what uh, other people didn't have the nerve to do. Mm -hmm. Let me name some people you've touched on and just tell me what your assessment was of them as both in the uh, as part of the anti-freeway movement but in general I mean people like uh, uh, Julius Hobson or uh, uh, Charles Cassell, various people from... from yeah, Africa. Charles Cassell. And he's still around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's... he's um, the interview. A little... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought... Yeah. yeah. He's been suffering from deterioration mm -hmm. uh, for quite a few years. Um, uh, they were... He was more or less on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's okay. I mean, you know, when it mattered, he'd show up every now and then. He's in the pictures, I see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Some online that he's... <laughs> Julius Hobson, I didn't know very well, but we knew each other instinctively as on the right side. He mm -hmm. came to the Three Sisters Bridge, that's how long ago since he... And he was in a wheelchair then. Yeah, yeah. he was in a wheelchair then. And um, he took a beating for marrying White. <laughs> uh, his wife took a job with the energy department, I think. We can interview her actually in a couple Our, of weeks. Yeah. Uh huh. She's back in She. Yeah. I wouldn't say she was an activist. You no, know, it's yeah. That's that's true. I think there were some things, but it was it's more about Julius and her 
that we, that we're well, he, with. you know, he never, he, he wasn't an organizer. He was a one-man band. As he always said, he could hold all his meetings in, all of his meetings in one booth. telephone booth. Yeah, yeah, he said that, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something, and we should probably wind this up, but I, I, I think uh, there's something you said at the beginning of today when we first came in about how um, the struggle here, the successful struggle to stop the freeways here, um, translated into some national influence. Could you talk a little about that? That it had an impact beyond the city here. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. About what it was? They heard about it, and... Uh, they would write to us, and I wish People I had said, oh, here. yes. People in tiny towns would say, why don't, why don't, if you would just tell them what they do to us. Um, the NAACP had a lawyer who was very friendly with us and stayed with us once in a while, named E.L. Rabin, and um, he would travel through Appalachia and uh, the people would say to him there, and um, they'd say, oh, Mr. Rabin, if only you would tell them what they're doing to us, they would stop. And he said, I would have to say, it's because you believe that, that they do what they do to you. Mm -hmm. And those are his exact words. Mm -hmm. uh, it's... Um, Hard to believe, but it's true. Mm -hmm. It's because you believe that we would stop if we knew how bad we were doing this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they can get away with doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the question about what, what, what ongoing impact or what further impact did this intense local struggle have on the larger, right, the larger right, 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 right. I got a good story there. For some reason, maybe I was never afraid to go and call people. There was a bunch of lawyers around Peter Craig that used to meet for lunch at the place called Merry-Go-Round. It's down mm. where the old Burlington Hotel was. Mm. And um, for some reason, I was invited to lunch, usually the only woman. And um, I was charged with calling Lewis Mumford. We were having mm. a big meeting at the State Department. That was early on. And uh, Jane Jacobs came, and a lot of people came, and I called. He lived in Amenia, New York, I think. And his wife called him to the phone and we had a nice chat. He clearly was frail at that point. Mm -hmm. And his last words were, God bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he couldn't come. Mm -hmm. But he did go to Maryland, maybe two years before that. Mm -hmm. And it was reported to me, because I knew people were going to Maryland, um, that he gave a talk to the students at Maryland and he was about to leave the stage. In fact, he finished his talk and he was on his way out. And someone from the audience jumped up and said, but Mr. Mumford, what can we do? And he stopped and turned and said, yesterday, the students in California stopped the Embarcadero. And he left the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, it's beautiful. Good. Yes, yes, it is. He was such a good friend of um, his. I, I'd like to have time or find them, get them. The letters that he and Van Wyck wrote. Van Wyck had a big freeway named after him. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good yes. Before this became a big issue, I, it, I think it goes over the. It goes like the Tappan Zee Bridge or something, you know, it crosses over an important river, Hudson. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Van Wick and uh, Lewis Mumford were worth reading. And Jane Jacobs, I, um, I think she was marvelous and very far seeing. And I think she's quite right. She said that 
I think she was the one who said, um, the grass will grow up through the cracks in the pavements and everything else, and the cities will just mm -hmm. be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have a city that is just an entertainment center. Mm -hmm. That's life. And I'd like to leave this quote. <laughs> But on my tombstone, it's going to be a very big tombstone. Um, if we don't rethink the kind of a country and the kind of cities and their sizes and how they connect, we are in Washington going to have nothing left but the capital of the free world will be named. Disneyland on the Potomac. <laughs> I really mean it. Mm -hmm. And it's heading that way so fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do not think we just make money. Mm -hmm. And for a long, long time, we have not been a democracy. Yeah. Really. Really about money. Wow. Thank you Thank very you. much. This is, this is I'm not done. Really this is, this is our, this <laughs> you go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it was so many years. I never got to the um, three years I spent as the only citizen voice on the congressionally ordered Office of Technology Assessment, the future of the automobile in the United States. Three years. Yeah. all over the country yeah. and uh, it was a sham from the beginning. You never meant to uh, give it legs. The um, couple, just two with Sam Abbott stories that Debbie once, that when somebody, I think it was from Europe, who was, this was years and years ago promoting electric cars and she said, I want you to meet somebody, Sam Abbott. She brought him in there and Sam says, I don't want to have anything to do with any cars. The goal is to get rid of cars, not to make them. That's right. I know that story too. But get other, him out of here. The other, the other one was, um, it was actually the Post had this in there when, at the Council of Governments, where he was in the early 80s, wanted them to adopt a resolution in support of the nuclear freeze campaign. And they had a big discussion of this, and they all said, well, this doesn't really relate here to the Washington area. I mean, this is, we'll, we'll table it and maybe come back to it another time. And, and Sam, got, I guess, got up from his seat and was starting out of the room just to get coffee or go to the restroom or something. And they said, the next item on the agenda is potholes in the Washington area. And Sam spoke up and said, potholes? You have a nuclear blast here. You're going to see the biggest goddamn <laughs> pothole you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody like him. No. <laughs> really. no, it was, it was hard, be hard to find anybody comparable, right? <laughs> no, I mean, the, the guy was. But I, but of course, I was working at the Post when people like uh, with Jack Eisen and the oh. stuff, and I was. And I never covered any free. I was mainly in Maryland, but I covered a public hearing uh, where people in Baltimore, where uh, people dressed up in sort of. Uh, patriot costumes for Fort McHenry and what the freeway would mm -hmm. do in that area. And wasn't, didn't Barbara Mikulski sort of get her start as a freeway? Uh, I could I mean, swear I, that to that. She was, uh, I, I don't somehow know. she came, I mean, out of the, the Polish mm -hmm. community there. I, for some reason I associated her. Well, she sure. came out of the Polish lower classes. Right, right. And uh, I, I just wasn't sure about the, the you know, fighting the freeway, whether that was part of her. Well, you know, once you, once you become an elected official, mm -hmm. yes. you can't really say everything you want to say. Yeah. I feel sorry for Boehner. Mm -hmm. for, some, <laughs> for some crazy reason. I think, the, the I think the guy, I think he's a good guy. I think yeah. he's with the wrong party. Yeah. I think he is. Mm -hmm. I don't need. I know. I mean, I understand that yeah. I'm way off uh, what most people think and feel and react to. But I do, having read his life story, so to speak, it was, I don't know where it was published. Uh, was he from your old district? Hmm? 
He's not from your old district. Ohio. He's, he's Ohio. Oh, Ohio, that's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course he is, yeah. Not, yeah. not mine either. He came from uh, Cincinnati, I think. So. No, but he, li he lived a very <clears throat> uh, but tough, uh, close, hard-working really? life. He had 12 children and they ran a bar. Oh. Well, he recently uh, has taken an interest in our parish two blocks down here, St. Anthony's. Uh, yeah. Conflict of interest. Oh, he's Catholic. <laughs>